Hey guys, so this video is not going to be very long. I just want to go over SDF modeling real quick. Now I've talked about this in previous videos on the channel, but I took them all down because SDF modeling is still relatively new and all the tools aren't fully flushed out um, to work these kinds of models out basically, but you can do it inside of Blender. There's also other programs out there like Substance 3D Modeler. So we're just going to do a quick comparison of uh, how it goes in Blender and how it might work in other software such as Modeler. Now, the main thing is that uh, SDF stands for sign distance field. It's basically volume modeling, right? And the SDF add-on here, the Conjure SDF add-on, it's still an alpha. It's not fully fleshed out yet. And so it's also a paid alpha. So it's really tough to stomach for some people, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's actually implemented fairly well at this point. And I can't wait to just see it improve more and more into the future here. Now, uh, this thing right here, Conjure um, an orb, right? To ponder or whatever delete default cube. What's going on here is it works best in Blender 3.3. It can work in Blender 3.6. However, it's going to get updated at some point in newer versions of Blender. But the main idea here is that what we're looking at is not actually polygons. This wireframe doesn't really tell you what's going on here. This is actually just a uh, SDF volume, right? So if I unselect that, you can see like if we zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, this thing is almost infinitely smooth forever and ever uh, to a very, very small ratio there, right? Uh, so basically, it switches the render engine so that it can display this kind of data correctly. It's all mathematical volume based stuff, right? And um, now we can actually model with it. So we can go to like object data properties. We have Boolean operations over here. We have a list here that we can put things into order and nest things under one another. And we can change like the, uh, the mat cap if we want. And we'll get rid of those, but this is your main setup here. So we can delete the sphere, shift A, we have CSDF primitives, we can create cubes. Uh, we can do bevels on these things, fun, some fun, some fun stuff like that, right? So if we were to duplicate this and move it out, you see how like the objects kind of combine together. You can actually influence how they combine together here, all right? Which is fun. You can add other types of primitives. They all gonna have different little kind of uh, setups to them that you can tweak them and whatnot here. So you can see we can grab some handles, pull things around. If we want to duplicate this and just move it out on Y bring it up, do something like that. I want to kind of uniform scale this right now. I think this is going to be updated where you can do the uniform scale a little bit easier, but right now I'm just going to click and drag down and do all of that at the same time under dimensions. And you can see we can do that. We can set it to a Boolean. We can set it to uh, intersect or a inset as well if we wanted to do that, right? And so, yeah, lots of cool stuff you can do basically when you start comboing all this together, basically, like if you wanted to take this one and bring it down and bring it out a little, you can see it's automatically joined together already. We can set the blend amount here. Maybe we duplicate it and bring it up and uh, whoop, let's just um, bring it in. Maybe do a subtraction. We can change the blend amount here, make it sharp or more rounded up to us. All right. So we can create hard surface stuff really fast this way. And matter of fact, because this is all non-destructive in nature, we can push these around in order, just like we're doing regular Boolean and on workflow. If you're having a hard time selecting things, you can control middle mouse wheel through these, this list here. Okay. So that's going to help you get a little bit more control over it. And it's definitely a little interesting workflow with um, a number of just different ways you can go about utilizing it. When you're done with this mesh, you can convert it into a high poly. You add bounds for the high poly. You just put it inside of a volume like this. Okay. I'm going to do it a little bit lower strength here or less detail. So I'll go down a little bit less. You can see the time. I'm just going to go for like a smaller amount of time and uh, generate. I don't know how it's going to come out with that six seconds or whatever it is, nine seconds. Right, it's going to just generate basically um, mesh chunks in its actual mesh. And since this render engine doesn't display the mesh here in 3.6 correctly, I got to go back to EV and set it to a uh, solid view. So press C in solid view. You can see it's like so. We're not going to do anything else except for clean up mesh chunks, let it go to town. It should just take a second. This is our actual mesh now. We can pull it out. And so, yes, we can generate high poly mesh. And in this case, it's decimated as well. So this is the remesh workflow where it does, we got a mirror, uh, remesh, smooth and decimate. Um, if we want to continue to sculpt on this, just get rid of the decimate. Okay. Just get rid of it. And you'll see it's, 
it's just going to be something like this. It's actually not too bad. And you can go sculpt on this thing all day long if you want to use like high, um, if you want to use like hard surface alphas and stuff on it, right? Like you could do that if it's enough resolution for you anyways. All right. Anyway, so that's how you do that over here in Blender. It's kind of a cool little add-on. It's not for everybody, but go look at Substance 3D Modeler. Also not going to be for everybody. It's a pretty interesting program, but there's some pros to this over Conjure. There's actually some cons to this over Conjure as well. Uh, together, it, it makes a more interesting tool set perhaps, but it, you know, eventually these softwares will all kind of figure out their workflows, I think, and they'll all become better. But the main idea still sticks here that it, uh, you, you create these kind of SDF primitives like so, and you can apply to create it, and it's going to create these little what they call layers or whatever. Right now we're on one layer, one shape basically. And we can change things like the size. We can do um, erase to do Boolean subtraction basically. And we can do an apply and get rid of that. You can see sometimes it looks a little bit rough, right? So just something to take note of is that you can select the base, go to this little option. You can up the resolution if you wanted to. Right. So I'm going to do that two times. Go back to the erase tool. It's still there. Click apply. Boom. Right. So if I want to change the size, I think the size changed on us, didn't it? Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting way of modeling, in my opinion. And what Substance is doing is it's more or less creating those SDF bases and then it's retopologizing it with a voxel system. So it's like sculpted in Blender, more or less. And uh, it's doing it kind of in real time, more or less. You can also do other things like knife separate, which you can't do with conjure. So like there's pros and cons to each one. Um, this actually works out really well over here. Not a big issue. Conjure, not so much. It's a little bit more frustrating to do separate objects, perhaps. And over here, we still have issues with like mirrors and things like that. Yeah, I think once they really flush out the workflow, everything will become a little bit nicer. But for now, this is what we have. And it's definitely... You know, I want to put my money behind it for the most part because it's just the kind of workflow that I, I really like. Like, it's just something I latched onto and um, would like to see it improve, basically, right? So we can do um, another knife separate. It's going to use uh, vertex colors to color this unless you use a material. But you can just set colors to things, for example. Flood fill it. Make that white. Let's make that darker. Right. Yeah, so we can take our time working with this and we can actually create absolutely phenomenal uh, geometry and 3D models. There are Unreal Engine Marketplace assets that certain artists have put up that are made entirely inside of um, this program, like straight from here to Substance, Auto Unwrap. You would never know because it all looks triple a it's actually fantastic looking artworks and um nobody's complaining about it for sure so it's rather it's a rather interesting workflow and i think that's what substance is counting on is that um as we go into the future the remeshers will get better whether they're voxels or quad remeshers um and polygon counts will become less and less important if gpus continue to get crazier and crazier basically right so this is more or less kind of like future proofing in some ways an idea of just working with a 3d mesh in this manner now on the flip side of that there is always cad software as well which is all mathematically based so i mean it's really um it really is future proof in that sense like it's not going to change its um its uh, shapes or anything right and it's always going to be able to be up res or down res so CAD software definitely has kind of an upper hand in that area, I would say. Uh, I think this tends to be a little bit more artistic in nature than using CAD software. It, it just allows you to go for shapes and forms a little bit easier, I would say, in some ways. Um, but a little bit more challenging than others because they are volumes and the volumes you may not get like a uh, ton of control over uh, at the moment. But I can only imagine them creating something like an ingon tool that lets you create all kinds of crazy ingon shapes and stuff like that super fast. 
Now that actually exists on another software. I forgot the name of it, but it's another SDF software and it's, um, it's got some quirks to it too. Like all the SDF software has quirks to it. Um, but ultimately if you know, I enjoy it, maybe you want to check it out. That's what this video is about really just to kind of introduce you to the idea of it and, um, maybe go play around with it a little bit. All right. Anyways, I'll check you out in the next one. Take care.